Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Uh, in this section what we're going to do is continue drilling down the, the Calc menu right here and uh, doing some of these functions down here. Number 6 and number 7, F min and F max. So we've already done differentiate, integrate, limits, sums, and products and here we're doing number 6 and number 7 because they kind of go hand in hand. Basically what these functions do is they allow you to type uh, a function of x in here and we'll do it here in a second. And what the calculator will do, we'll try to go ahead and return to you the maximum of that function and the minimum of that function. All right, now we've already done some of this in the, in the uh, earlier part of the course when we were in graph mode. We talked about how to do that in graph mode. In other words, earlier on I showed you how to graph a function and use the, the uh, menu associated with graph mode to go in and find f min and f max. Uh, and you normally do that by providing a boundary. You kind of draw, you know, some uh, a lower limit and an upper limit on the screen of your graph, and then it'll it'll search through the window and figure out what the max and min is there. Um, so most of the time you're going to do this in graph mode, but the calculator does give you the ability to to do it here. Uh, one thing I am going to tell you though is that these functions don't always provide the uh, the the relative maximum and the relative minimum. Um, they usually find the absolute maximums and the absolute minimums. So what I mean by that is if you've got humps, you know, hills and valleys here uh, in your function, if it's going up and down, generally this guy is going to find the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum and not just hunt around for these little relative max and relative min guys. So most of the time it's going to be better to graph the function and use the graphing capabilities. So it's sort of like we're not going to spend too much time on this, but they do provide it. So we are going to go and explore it. So if you put f min on the stack, number six here, uh, it means find the minimum, minimum value of a function. So probably the easiest thing everybody can visualize is the function x squared. So you just type the function in, and you can all, I'm not gonna graph it here for you because most people will know that that function comes down and touches the axis here and goes back up again. So you have to put the function in, but you have to put a comma and the value of x to search over because this is a function of x and you're just telling it to hunt over the values of x and kind of go on from minus infinity to plus infinity in terms of x and figure out what the maximum of this function is. Uh, well, if you're using f max, in this case we're doing f min, so it's going to be searching for the minimum value of the function. So when we hit enter, the calculator is going to scan across x and it's going to figure out that there's a, a, an absolute minimum that occurs at uh, when, uh, when uh, x is equal to zero. So if you can visualize this graph here, it's a parabola centered right there in the middle of the, of the xy axis. It comes down and it kisses the x axis there, it just barely touches it and it comes back up. And of course that minimum occurs at x is equal to zero. All right. Uh, so it's finding, it's returning the x value of the minimum. Uh, that's what it's doing there. If you uh, shift this graph vertically up, so if you do like plus 10, so it's bas this would basically look like a parabola uh, that was shifted up along the y-axis and you, you go ahead and evaluate this guy, it's going to return exactly the same thing because the minimum value of this function, it's still a parabola, it's just shifted up the y-axis. So as far as x is concerned, the value of x that gives a minimum is at exactly the same place because this is just shifting the function up. Now, if we take that out, that, that, that guy right there, and if we go and edit the original function and put some parentheses in here and go inside the parentheses and say let's make it x minus 4, uh, you probably learned in algebra that if you take uh, something like this and shift it inside of the square like this, then it's going to be shifting the entire parabola over to the right four units. If this is foreign to you, this is something that you learn in a college algebra class or in an advanced algebra class, it's also covered on, on the DVDs. Basically when you, when you shift inside of the variable like that with a minus sign, it pushes the whole graph to the right four units. So if you think about a parabola shifted four rights to the units to the right, then the minimum value should occur at x is equal to four because if you were to graph this, it would not be centered on, you know, along the uh, x is equal to zero, it would actually be shifted over to the right. So the minimum would be at x is equal to four. So I think you kind of get the hang of how this, this guy works. And uh, the max function, f max number seven, behaves in exactly the same way. So if we put, uh, instead of x squared, let's do uh, negative x squared. So all we're doing is taking ne we're taking x squared and we're putting a negative out in front of it. We'll put comma x. Now if you think about it, what would this graph look like? If we did graph it, it would look, look like an upside down parabola because every value here we're just putting a negative sign on. So basically 
if you could imagine an XY plane here, it's going to go up and kiss the axis and come back down. So the, the value that makes this function maximum is also at X is equal to zero because it kind of comes up and, and comes down. If we go inside here and do sort of the same thing, open up some parentheses and shift it over, let, let's shift it to the left this time, X plus six. So this is going to be an upside down parabola, but since we have a plus sign here, it's shifted to the left six units. Right, so we hit enter, the calculator is going to correctly figure out that this graph is, is the maximum of this graph is, is at uh, x is equal to negative 6. Now let's look and see what happens. Let's change this graph completely. We're still finding the maximum value and let's do it at x squared. Right, So this is the regular parabola that goes up like this and we're finding a maximum value. So we'll hit enter and you'll see the calculator is going to re return. It's going to try to find the maximum value as it searches along x and it figures out that basically there is no relative maximum. It just, this graph, since it's a parabola, it starts at negative infinity up here and it kind of comes in, goes down like we already know it does, and it goes back to positive infinity. So the values of x that give this function a maximum are at x is equal to negative infinity and, and x is equal to positive infinity. So you can, you can use these f min and f max functions in a pinch if you just really quickly need to know what the maximum and minimum values of a function are. Most cases it's probably going to be a little bit better to just graph the function and you can see it and then you can zoom in on your certain areas and you can also use the uh, functions that we talked about earlier in graph mode. You can still find the maximum and minimum, minimum functions in that mode directly. Now one more thing I want to show you before we go ahead and close this lesson out. Let me go ahead and clear all of this out. I want to give a little bit more complicated function just to kind of show how these things behave. So in order to kind of get that point across, let's go into the graph menu and let's go ahead and graph the following function. x to the fourth power uh, minus 3 times x squared uh, and let's do plus 2 like this. So this is going to be our graph. We're going to hit enter and put it up there. And then we'll just hit second function and go off to the graph screen and watch it graph. And then we're in the standard zoom. So it's going to take a few minutes because it's x to the fourth power. So it's going to take a little while before it starts to actually do its thing. So you see this is a W, sort of looks like a W. To make it a little bit clearer, let's go into the zoom menu and go zoom box. And let's go to the left. What I really want to do is kind of look at what's happening where all the action is. I mean, we know it goes up to infinity. So let's go ahead and just sort of look at what's going on with the W part so we can, we can compare what the graph looks like to what those functions are returning. So give it a second. It dips below the x-axis. It goes up to a maximum up here, relative maximum. And it goes down and dips below the x-axis again. And then it goes up to infinity. So you can see it starts, if you continue on, this is positive infinity for y. And then we have a relative minimum here. We have a relative maximum here, another, another minimum here, and then we have a, an absolute maximum over here. So we know that basically this is a minimum here, this is a minimum here. So let's go back, let's back out of this guy. Uh, so we'll just hit second function, quit, and let's go over to uh, home. So let's go to home. Okay, and let's go and see what this function returns to us. So let's go ahead to the calc menu. Let's go and look at fmin number six, and let's type the function in that we just graphed. So we'll do x to the fourth power uh, minus three times x squared and plus two. And we'll put a comma x, close the parentheses off. So now you know what this function looks like. It has those two little bottoms of the w out there. Those are the absolute minimums. Give it a second because it is an x to the fourth guy. So we get some values here involving a square root. It tries to give us the exact answer. If we don't want to look at those, hit the squiggly equal sign in green. Let it think for one more time. And then we will see that what we have is x is equal to negative 1.22. Uh, and then you've got some, some change over here. And we have a positive value up here. So it doesn't really show you in terms of the decimal, but there's a negative and a positive value 1.22 basically. So if we go back to the graph screen, this is, it's hard to see this tick mark here, but this is 1 and this is 2 because I've zoomed in. So 1.2 is about here, negative 1.2 is about here. So it found the two values of x um, that correspond to the minimum values of this function. All right, so that sort of matches up with what you look at on the graph. Now let's go back, uh, back out of here, and let's do exactly the same thing. So except for this time, I'm going to, let me clear all this stuff out, we'll go to the calculate menu, we'll do f max number seven. So we'll type the same thing in, x to the fourth power minus 
three times x squared uh, plus two. And we'll do comma x, and we'll close the parentheses off so we're finding a maximum value. So we'll hit enter, let it think for a second, and it'll take a second, and notice it returns negative infinity and positive infinity, positive, negative infinity here, positive infinity for our maximum values of this function. Let's go back to the graph menu and make sense of that. What the, what the calculator has done is scanned across the x-axis and it's trying to find the, the absolute maximum value. And notice that yes, we do have a, a relative maximum here, but the function gets higher over here, negative infinity, and it gets higher over here at positive infinity. So, so over here, where we go off to infinity, that's the true maximum value of this function. This guy right here, this is what we call a relative maximum. It goes up and then it comes down. The reason I'm showing you this example is because those two functions in the calculate menu um, they don't, uh, they only return the absolute maximums and the absolute minimums. So that's why sometimes you'll get negative and positive infinity, even though you know that there's a kind of a mountain in there somewhere. So it's, it's good to get a general idea what the answer is, quick and dirty, if you don't have time to graph the function. But most of the time, it's going to be better to go ahead and graph the function, and you can sort of see what's going on. And if you're curious about this guy right here in the middle, the best way to handle that is what we did before. We'll go to the math menu. We'll go to the maximum value. And see now, since we're in graph mode, the calculator prompts us for a lower bound. So we'll hit enter there. We'll scoot along to the upper side on the other side. Upper bound, we'll hit enter there. It'll think for a second, and it'll just search inside this window for the maximum value of the function that occurs inside that window. And just give it a few seconds, and it'll go ahead and spit the answer down or answer out. So y is equal to 2, x is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 38, which you got to remember this is a calculator. When you get really small exponents, it means it's basically 0. So x is 0, y is 2. That's the maximum value here. So I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, most of the time you'd probably prefer to graph the function and then, uh, and then use the graph capabilities to find the maximum and minimum values. But if you're crunched for a test, if you already know what the graph looks like and you just want a quick and dirty answer, then uh, if, as long as you know how the thing's behaving, then the best thing to do is go off in here to the calc menu and just use fmin and xmax. They do, fmax, they do work, but they only return the, the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Fmin and Fmax can definitely help you. I just want to make sure you understand how to use them and what they're returning so you don't get confused if you get an answer like this. And without graphing it, you wouldn't necessarily know that there's a hump in the middle. Um, you know, so it's kind of good to, to use the graphing abilities of the calculator if there's any question at all about what the function looks like.